What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Live Fridays, Down Under Edition with the Traveling Tennis Coach. Again, a platform I use to interview coaches, pro players, tennis enthusiasts, you name it. By trade, my name is Chris Clark, former college tennis player, tennis pro, and good old-fashioned tennis enthusiast. Today, I couldn't be more excited to welcome in our guest all the way from Down Under, Melbourne, Australia, Coach Michael. He is one of Australia's leading developmental coaches for juniors and touring pros. He is the coach of WTA player and title holder, Zoe Hives, but just really excited to get to know him and interview him as always. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and we'll get we'll get going. I'm gonna invite him in. Let me see here. Give it one second and we'll get at it. Hey, how are you, man? Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm good. What about yourself? Yeah, good, good. Um, good. Doing well back on court, which is which has been really good. So, okay. Yeah, happy to be here. Happy to uh, have a chat. Nice, nice. How long have you been back on court? Um, so, we've been back for, oh, probably about a week. So, okay. this is the second week back in Melbourne. Um, obviously, with restrictions. So, with the numbers we're allowed on court. Yeah. But really good to, to be back on court. Um, you know, it's been a couple of months where we, we haven't been able to do anything. Um, you know, a bit bored, looking for <laughs> things to do. So it's, it's good to just get back out, hitting some balls and, and doing the long hours again. Absolutely, absolutely. And so thanks again for joining. What I try to do, I, I've started this platform to interview coaches and pro players and just kind of keep in touch with people from all across the world to figure out, you know, how are they managing this unique time of downtime and and just get to know them so i'll jump right in with just a few questions uh that i had and and we'll see how it goes go from it. there sound good yeah go for it so just tell me a little bit about your background how you got into tennis and how you became a, a wta you know coach and tour yeah well coach for that yeah part. yeah a bit of everything um so yeah my journey um i can clearly remember my first lesson um, it was in 87, um, indoor court, um, remember turning up and just didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, my parents just got me into tennis lessons. It wasn't something that I wanted to do necessarily. Um, just went there, picked it up really quickly, um, had a bit of talent for it and just away it went and just loved the game playing like I would hit against walls and yeah. watching tennis, just loved it. Um, so as a junior, you know, I was a fairly successful junior. So I was always ranked, you know, top few in Australia, um, you know, in Australian teams and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, so tennis was what I wanted to do. My goal and my my dream was to be a pro. So that's yeah. what I wanted to do, like most of us, and just went on that journey, did it. Um, and then played pro for a few years. Um, grinded really hard you know yeah. I spent six seven months of the year away in Europe mainly um, and then after three four years that probably wore down on me just an accumulation of all the travel and, and I sort of fell out of love with the game a little bit more so yeah. not so much the actual playing but more so everything that went with it um, it was just really tough so you know after that I decided to just pack it all up I went to university did a degree um, commerce degree and and even when I finished that I wasn't sure what I wanted to do so I, you know right. I, I necessarily didn't want to be a coach um, at the time I was sort of thinking well I've got a degree I should use it you know what am I what am I going to do and then I sort of fell into coaching a little bit I got a, a, an email one day from a guy in New York who offered me a job um, coaching at his academy nice um, and I felt like I just needed something different go away i felt new york's a pretty good place to go so i just went and from there i i developed that real passion for coaching and and helping kids and helping others and it sort of got my love for the game back in a different way so it was always quite a selfish way before where i wanted to and do it for me and i wanted to play and and i wanted to do this and i want to do that whereas afterwards you're thinking about others how can i help others and and develop that real passion for coaching um, so I spent two years there, came back home, um, was coaching here. Um, again, was, was coaching, but not, you know, you'd like to work with high-performance players, um, you know, having that background. 
but it was just flowing on and it was just doing a bit of coaching here and there and, and nothing, you know, working with real great players or anything like that. And then I just happened to start coaching Zoe because she played at my club and we just developed that relationship. And I, I look deep down, I, I knew what I could do, but hadn't been mm-hmm. given that opportunity yet. So I started working with her and then she started progressing and, and, and then it just flowed on from there. So I've been coaching her since 2013. So wow. since she was 16, so still, you know, coaching her, she's coming back now. And, and even now that, that relationship there, we still feel like there's a ton to work on. So it's not like it's gone stale or anything like that. We actually probably as motivated as what we were at the start in terms of what we can still do. Um, you know, and with that, I've also coaching a lot of juniors, um, and really, really enjoying that. So I feel like I've got a really good balance. So I have a lot of juniors who are developing from eight, nine years old and sort of knowing now the journey to get to that next level, having, especially having worked with Zoe, um, I'm sort of feel like I'm better able to prepare them for that journey and what's to come ahead, which I think is a big part of it. Um, a lot of players don't know what's going on as you move along, along the journey. So being able to give them that knowledge from a young age is really good. So I feel like, you know, I have eight year olds, six year olds that I coach, you know, 10, 11, 12, 14, some good juniors at 17. So I feel like I have a really good balance and I have, um, different motivations with all of them. So it's not, I don't get stale. I feel like I'm always fresh because I'm working with different kinds of players. So yeah, that's, that's my coaching journey. So I'm able to balance the two, go on tour a little bit with Zoe, but still have that impact at the lower levels, which I enjoy at the moment. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it just, it sounds like you were, you were primed and ready for that opportunity and it it just presented itself, right? Yeah. I, I think for a lot of people, um, I've always believed in investing in myself. So I've always continued to increase my knowledge. Um, You know, I remember back when I was in the US coaching, I'd go and do different, you know, courses and certifications and just get that knowledge. So I think you've got to be ready for when an opportunity presents itself Mm -hmm. um, rather than be a deer in headlights. So, you know, I'm a much better coach now than even what I was two months ago, just by this time off doing different things. So I feel like you've just got to constantly learn and evolve and, and, and pick up new things. And then, and a lot of it's experience, you know, as I say to a lot of my players, I will make mistakes every single lesson with them. You know, I sort of look at you really funny, but um, <laughs> I'm not perfect. I'll make mistakes in each and every lesson. And I think yeah. every coach does, but it's about, you know, we're on a journey as well as the players. So I think it's constantly making sure that you're upskilling yourself, learning a lot, um, and then when that opportunity presents itself, you're better prepared. Absolutely. And, and the one thing you said that I found was interesting is you, you continue to learn. And I think in this age of COVID, right, it's forced us to think differently about, you know, how we teach, how we coach and, and just do things differently. And I'm just curious, like, how have you been able to manage and, and keep your skills up and stay in shape and, and train and give confidence to your students on, you know, what to do in a time like this. Yeah, I've, I've, I've told them, especially my students, um, I've told them that actually this is an opportunity. This is actually not a, a negative. It's actually a really good opportunity because, I mean, a lot of them are juniors. And I find at that level, a lot of them tend to focus just on the hitting side of it and not the yeah. holistic development side. So, you know, if you look at the different areas, you know, the technical, tactical, physical, that everyone knows about, the mental Mm-hmm. Not enough time is spent on those areas, but I think a big area is just personal development. Um, you know, they all want to be pros, a lot of them. So when they get to that next level, I, you know, just from experience working with Zoe, I find a lot of um, players don't have those personal development skills and those life skills to be yeah. able to adapt and cope with everything that's thrown at them. And it's not just the pros; I think it's all levels players going to college you know you've got players who leave home go to college and there's all those things i don't think they're i don't think as a sport we prepare them well enough for that from the junior levels i think we focus a lot on the hitting side so i've used this as an opportunity to work on that so i've done a lot of you know online sessions so we'll get on the zoom do some online tennis sessions for those who have been able to get on course i'll just spend half an hour and you know get in a room just show them what i need to do adapt um i've done a lot of online sessions so we've done some, 
you know, mindset stuff, some tactical analysis stuff on a weekly basis, conditioning stuff. So, you know, I'll, I'll set them things to do um, and share with them a lot of the stuff that I'm learning, say, from the higher levels working with Zoe. And I filter it down to their level, but I'm actually mm -hmm. sharing them a lot of that information. So I feel like some of that can be maybe a little bit too overwhelming for them because they're not used to that information. Um, but you just tried to, I've tried to strengthen those other pillars um, of, of one, their game and their development. So when they go back on the court, the hitting I find is the easy part. That's the easy part. But I think we've got to do a better job in preparing them for all the other stuff. So I've seen this as a really good opportunity to work on that. I've, um, you know, I've spent a lot of time trying to say, even, you know, I've gone out there myself and, and done some physical stuff and some footwork stuff. Um, one for me to do it again, just to get the feel for it and remember what it was like and, and how I can better explain it and, and then provide it for them. So there's, there's so much you can do. Um, I think if we focus just on the hitting and yeah, then you're limited, but you know, from, from their perspective, there's so much they can do from my perspective, I've done, you know, some courses, I've just started another, um, course I'm doing now, um, just on development of athletes and, and stuff. So I'm trying to just keep increasing my knowledge in this time. And that's what I've used it for. So whilst I haven't been on court, I've been really busy. Um, yeah. And so when I've gone back on court, it's just, it's felt like just a continuation of what I've already been doing um, time-wise. Yeah. And, and the one thing that really, really sits with me is, is like this appreciation for the sport. And it's kind of like one of those things you always expect that you're going to be able to play and, and coach and do different things. And all of a sudden, there's no sports, there's no tennis, there's, it's hard, there's nothing to really train for at the moment. Um, mm. But now that you're back on court, can you just talk a little bit about your appreciation as a coach, even as a player, just for the game being back out there, how special it is and how you, yeah. know, you teach people maybe to take it for granted. Yeah, I, th I think in general, tennis is quite a selfish sport where it's an individual yeah. sport. So we tend to be very introverted and think of ourselves a lot. Um, and I think those kind of people will struggle at this time because their identity is tied in with them playing tennis. So mm -hmm. I think this is a great opportunity for us to take a step back and think of, you know, one, why we play, you know, why are we going back out on the court, you know, as coaches, why we, why do we coach? You know, is it just for, you know, is it just for, for a dollar or is it because I generally want to do certain things? So I think it gives you an opportunity to become clearer with what you want to do. Yeah. Um, and step back and really, yeah, we do take things for granted when we're, when it's just readily available. And, and this time off, I found, especially with a lot of the students who have come back, have gone, oh, just so good hitting balls. You know, even, you know, you open a can of balls and the smell of the balls and, and whilst you're working <laughs> long hours, it's, it's, you're just having a greater appreciation because it's not there. And when things aren't there, you start to realize how much you value them. Um, and for me, look, tennis is my life. It's been a, an interesting journey to get to where I am now. Um, and I fell out of love with the game a bit, but you know, yeah. my, I feel like my passion as a coach is probably more so than it was as a player. Um, and yeah, definitely this time has given us all an opportunity, I think, to, to really appreciate what's important to us when we go out on court. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's well said. That's well said. And then as a coach, you know, we're always setting goals and we're thinking about the day-to-day but just throughout your career, it could be coaching, it could be playing. Just one of your, what's one of your favorite tennis memories or something you were just as a player or and or coach really just proud of? Yeah, there are, well, there's a couple. Like my one, some of my favorite memories are actually when I playing juniors. You know, yeah. just going to play junior tournaments and 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 seeing friends and it's just a different, completely different vibe to the pro level, and you sort of they're the things I do miss is going back to that and just playing a match and in between the socializing, but also the training side of it. Like, you know, we had a really good group of guys training and, and we didn't have coaches. We'd just go out there hit for three, four hours mm -hmm. and it was just us against each other and, and pushing each other. And they're the kinds of things you miss from, a, from, from, for me um, that I look back at and I go, well, I wish I could go back, you know, 30 years and, and get back to that. Cause it was, that was fun for me. Yeah. And then, you know, the other, I guess, tennis memory playing-wise I had was in 96 at the Australian Open where I was um, Steffi Graf's hitting partner. So I was able to be a hitting partner for the tournament. 
And I was also playing the juniors and the men's qualifying. So I was, I was quite busy and I got an appreciation for the fact that you can be, I mean, she was number one in the world at the time, a top player, but at the same time, um, very humble, very respectful. So they, you know, right. here I am just a junior, just as a practice partner, they worked around my schedule to yeah. get with her, which, and I'd go to the, the hotel and meet them for breakfast and then I'd drive in with them, you know, things like that where, they were like, yeah, no worries. Let us know when you're playing your match. So, you know, I played another venue of juniors and I'd, they'd, they'd work me around. They'd work their schedule, not their schedules, but they'd work me into their schedules based on what I was doing, which was, wow. you know, which you wouldn't expect normally. Of a, and you probably wouldn't get that now from a number one player in the world. But, <laughs> you know, I started to get an appreciation for it's also about the personal excellence as well as the performance excellence. You know, there's two sides of it to being a champion. So you try to instill that to all your students. Yeah. And then on that note, just as you think of advice you give your students or you give anybody on the WTA, WTA, ATP, whatever it may be, just the advice side of the business. Are you focused more on like goal setting or just more focused on like, Hey, what's the process of, you know, just really winning each and every day and giving your best foot or putting your best foot forward. Yeah, it's all it's all process related. Um, control what you can control. So yeah. it's big on goal setting. Um, and when we talk about goal setting, there's, you know, the results, obviously, or there's, you know, the process of what you're doing and what you want to get out of it as an in individual. And I think that goes back to what your personal goals in, why you're playing, um, you know, because... Something th those things you can control, you know. You can control, you know, what is it that I want to, you know, it might be something as simple as, you know, on the court, the way I'm, you know, reacting to a certain situation. I want to work on that. And if I work on that and I get that better, I'm going to get better results anyway. It's going to, well, it's going to help me get those results. So it's always about the individual and growing as an individual. And, and that includes me as a coach. So if I look at the journey with Zoe, um, a lot of it has been self-reflection too. So, you know, she's say working with a mindset coach. I've done sessions with the coach as well. And I've worked on certain things because you're growing together. So I think with any player you have, you're actually growing together. Yeah. Um, not the case, well, you do this and, and I'm just going to stay over here and you need to do this and you just, so I, I felt like for me, it's, it's, I'm on that journey as well and growing as a coach and, and, and the team you have together, you're growing together. So I think it's really, really important um, that it's always process orientated, um, focusing on yourself, working on yourself as an individual. Um, you know, I find, yeah. Um, but to really get, you know, maximize your potential, I think it's all those other areas that largely untapped with a lot of players, the top players, you know, less so, and they probably have more people around them that can assist them with that, which makes it really hard for the lower rank players. Yeah. Um, but definitely, you know, focusing on yourself and your development as an individual is really, really important. And so that's something I focus on. And, and that's what I, you know, on the court, whenever we're doing it, it's, it's solely based on you as an individual doing this, doing that, not, you know, did you win this tournament? Did you win that? I find that's, that comes as a result of what you what you do um, yeah. you know, on the court. Yeah, I really like that. I really like that. Um, as, as I think about coaching and, and just playing in college here in the States and, um, you know, coaching juniors or people from all levels, um, but not so much on like a, a high performance or a um, obviously professional level. What's one thing you would recommend to someone who will see this and say, hey, you know, I have a goal of being an ATP coach or a WTA coach. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what is the pathway or what are some steps I should ensure that I do to get there? What would you, what would you recommend to them? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question because there's, I mean, you know, like myself, we've all, when I've stopped, I wanted to work with a really top player at that top level. Easier said than done. Like I've done it a different way, whereas I've, I've had a junior go to that level. Now I'm, I'm working at that level a little bit. Um, not that it's full time or anything, but a little bit, and it's you know, so that's one avenue. But the one thing I would I would say is coaching. It's it's a lot about relationships, especially at that level. So you can be as knowledgeable as you like, you can know all the information you want, but if you can't connect with that player, it won't make a difference. And it, and it's a different situation. You know, you're working with juniors. I work with juniors where they come to you, 
you're the coach, you're, you know, guiding them. At that level, they are essentially your boss. Um, and if they don't get results, they can get rid of you. So it's a really difficult situation for a coach in that, well, when you need to give them a kick up the backside or you need to really call them out on things, how are they going to react? And I think the strength in that relationship will make the difference. Um, if you're going there, you know, hard-headed, solely focused on the result and not the individual, I don't think it's going to last that long. So what I would say is get to know the individual, um, you know, get to know all different things about them, their upbringing, you know, not that you have to go into detail, but it's important, I think, to know these things, to see where they're coming from, their culture. Yeah. And it's up to you to adapt to that, not them to adapt to you sometimes. And it's, it's our job as coaches, I find, is getting the best out of the players. And mm. how do we do that? Um, it's not a one size fits all. Everyone's different. So like, you know, even working with juniors, you have five different kids. They're all different. So I don't treat them all the same. Um, whilst you have your values and your, your rules and, and stuff like that, um, you've also got to allow for the individual. Um, and I think that's really important. So I think if I was to give one piece of advice and just, you know, just observing and seeing different things and the relate and, 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 and the teams that work, it's all about relationships and knowing your player. Because there are sometimes, sometimes as simple as your player just needs a hug. Yeah. And, and you could be going hard and thinking we've got to work harder on that. And it's something as simple as they just need, you know, a chat, a pat on the back and you're away and that's all they need. Um, because it can get quite lonely and there's so much pressure. And, and, I, and this, I find this in juniors as well. Like I see it all the time. I, I can remember when I played and the things I experienced, which I think becomes an advantage working with these kids, is that, you know, I know what it feels like. I, I know those, those feelings and those pressures and I can pick them straight away now. And sometimes it's as simple as, as telling a kid, you know, and a kid who lost love and love in a match, came to me and was scared to come to me thinking, what am I going to say? And I was, all I said was, all right, so we lost the tennis match. What do we have to work on? And it just, it just cleared everything. And now there's no fear anymore. You know, if we, if we win or lose comes, doesn't matter. So I think that's our job as individuals, know the person, know which buttons to push when, yeah. and, and just develop really strong relationship, get to know the person. You don't, if you don't know the person, your message is not going to get through. Yeah. I mean, Wow. Well said. I mean, I think you, what really stuck with me was the fact that you said, Hey, you're, you're reading the situation and it may be just as easy as hugging, giving a hug or, yep. you know, you lose all and out. Well, maybe not now, <laughs> but you can just give them an elbow tap or something. But yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm thinking I lose all and out or, you know, I'm a junior and I'm, and I lost the match or I was up a set in a break and I ended up losing the next nine games to lose the match. And I'm thinking, you know, what, what are my, you know, what is my coach going to say when I come off the court? And if he's positive about it and there's ways that we can, hey, he's like, what are we going to do to not let that happen? And I'm like, I go back into thinking mode, like, oh, okay, it's not, it happens. Let's learn from it. So I think that, yeah, I think that's well said. Yeah. And a lot of things that happen are normal. A lot of feelings are normal. And I think it's important to normalize them. So just like you mentioned there, before you even probably got off the court, you know, as a kid and you're playing and you're not playing that well, you're already thinking about, well, what am I going to hear after the match? So it's very difficult to, to play, you know, in a relaxed state. So it's really important that you know, us as coaches, as parents, it's not just tennis, it's everything, um, that we allow um, kids to fail. Just let mm -hmm. them fail as much as they want. It's the only way they're going to learn. They, they fall over, they'll get back up and they'll go again. You know, we, you can't protect them. You're preparing them for life as well as a tennis match. Because when you get out there, like at the next level, if that's what they want to do, um, yeah, you're not going to have people there coddling you and doing that. You're just going right, it's, to, right. it's, 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 that's life. It's the, how the world operates in everything. So, um, yeah, it's up to us as coaches to create that environment for them. Absolutely. No, that's great. That's great. One more question for you. Um, I always think, and I'm just thinking back to my college tennis days, one of the things we always did was goal setting. Like we looked at the year, we looked a couple years ahead. And I'm just curious for yourself, as you think about where you want to go from a coaching perspective, one, do you set goals that far in advance, three to five years? And if you don't, what, how do you recommend goal setting from a results perspective? And two, 
what are you looking to do down the road from a tennis perspective? So when I look you up or I'm in Australia for the 2024 Australian Open, I can say, wow, you're doing exactly what you said you'd be doing. Yeah, good question. Like, that, <laughs> um, physically, I don't know where I'll be. Yeah. You know, at the moment, I'm here. So I'm doing, and I, I know, because you never know what pops up. You know? sure. All I can do is control what I control. So yes, do I set goals? Absolutely. So even with my program, I'm working on things at the moment that I've been working on for the last couple of years. Um, so from the performance side of things with with the juniors and, and the pathway up, I'm working on a few things. So I'm hoping that's all set. Um, and it's just, it's creating yeah, a holistic program, like I said, that focuses a lot on all these areas. Um, that's going to prepare them to be where they want to be later on. I think one of the best as a coach, the pieces of advice, advice or the learnings that I got was it would have been a few years ago um, where I was coaching and I was asked a question by um, one of the national coaches um, went in there sat in there and, and she said to me well, what's your goal as a coach and I thought oh, okay so I gave the the standard answer that we give everyone well I want my players to be like this and I want them to develop this kind of stuff and and, and whatnot and she goes no what's your goal as a coach and then it made, it made me stop and think. It was the first time that I actually stopped and thought about, okay, what do I want to achieve? And then I walked away and, okay, clear. Now it drives everything is I want to produce players, um, mm -hmm. you know, develop players who go to college, get to that next level. That's my goal as a coach. So I love, like with Zoe, that I've been able from a junior to build her to that level. Um, and seeing now what I need to do when I – work with juniors um you know i'm able to do certain things that i probably wouldn't have done five six years ago because of that journey that i've gone on with her so in a few years time three to five years time zoe's still playing top 50 hopefully traveling yeah. around with her a little bit but also these juniors that i have coming up who are going to go to college and get to that level my goal for them is to be you know top juniors you know and yeah. working their way towards pro level. So it's developing that side of players. Now, where I'll be from a um, physical location sense, who knows? Five years, a lot can happen. We can, we've can we seen what's happened in the last six months. So <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't necessarily look at location. All I look at is what do, how do I develop as a person? So in three mm. to five years. So my knowledge from three years ago to now has increased. You know, what I want to do, my, you know, just clarity in what i'm doing is increased so it's definitely producing a program having a program that um you know develops these players all the way through their junior years to that next level and when they get to that next level my goal for them is well i can't guarantee you a ranking but what i hope to guarantee you is have you prepared to give it a real good crack when you get there you know from from a holistic development level not just a tennis level um, so that, that's, that, that'd be my goals as a coach, but from a physical location or exactly where I'll be doing, I might be in your city doing something, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but that's, that's my goals is just to develop players and develop myself. So I look at more myself and how I want to develop as a coach yeah. rather than, you know, I want to be doing this and I want to producing this cause I actually have no control over that. I can only control what I can control. Um, so, I th yeah, I feel like from a, a knowledge perspective and training perspective, you know, I've done a fair bit. Um, for me, it's just increasing knowledge that's going to help my program and what I want to do with that. Yeah, and I think one of the things I've learned, and I'm glad you said it, was, you know, it's good to have goals, but you got to focus on the day and you got to focus on yourself. And to be honest, you, you don't know what's going to happen in the next year, and I don't know what's going to happen in the next year. So, you have to be able to look at goals and pivot and make changes, but also just focus on, hey, did I get better today? Did I learn something new? And I, I really like your approach to just coaching in general because I think there's so much value in how you think. And I think a lot of people can, you know, grab onto that or, and relate to that and, and be more willing to, you know, want to work with a coach who's more like, yeah, yesterday was a bad day. It was yesterday. Let's focus on today. Yeah. Let's not let that happen again, as opposed to, like that one bad day cost you the tournament or vice versa. So no, I, yeah. I got a lot of appreciation for that. Yeah. And I think, I think also it's important that 
you can have goals, results, goals, or you know, I could say, well, in you know, in three years' time, I want to be have five hundred players in my program and doing this and that. But does it fulfil you? Is that what you want to do? Absolutely. So that's why I don't put that kind of goal to it at the moment because I don't look at it, say, from a business perspective. I look at it from a development perspective and a personal development. So what I want to do, I could be working with 10 players alone, but if I'm achieving what I want to achieve as a coach, then I'm happy. Um, right. So mm -hmm. I think it's – it's and, and, and things as a coach can change in a year. You know, you, you, you've got to be adaptable like players. You've got to be adaptable as coaches because I don't think you can – um, just stick to one um, ideal and goal and, and because you're constantly learning and things are evolving and things are changing and I want to be flexible and adaptable to that. You know, if yeah. something inspires me and, and I want to do it, I'll go for it. Um, but right now I'm really enjoying what I'm doing and, and that's that's where I see myself at the moment. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. And with that, I am all out of questions. <laughs> All right, I'm out of answers. No. no, we could we could talk for ages. There's so much to talk about, but no, I want to yeah, thank absolutely. you for the opportunity of of allowing me to have a chat with you and just um, sharing some stuff with you. And it's always good to talk to people who are passionate about the game and absolutely. and just interacting and networking and connecting and and hopefully learning things off each other. Yeah, and I think you know the, with the world being small and the tennis world being even smaller. You know, the, our paths could cross one day. So, again, for you, just uh, thanks for taking the time because I know you're busy and things are back in full swing. So I'm sure everybody wants to run to the courts. And at least here in the Hopefully. States, the one thing that's pretty funny is, you know, I think tennis is actually going to grow quite a bit because contact sports aren't allowed. So yeah, now definitely. everybody's like, well, let's, let's go play tennis. So I think yeah. you're going to see people and increase in lessons and buddies who teach you know, their, their, their lessons are already full because people, you know, they can't do anything else. So um, yeah, I think Again, it could be interesting and good for the game. Yeah, opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> An opportunity yeah. for tennis is how you look at it. It's not a negative. I, I Straight away, opportunity. Well, tennis is a social distancing sport, so let's exactly. take advantage of it. Right. And then you become addicted to it. So hopefully that happens. <laughs> but anyway, again, thanks for the time. Greatly appreciate it. And, and all the best of luck to you. Thanks a lot. Really enjoyed it. All right. Thanks. We'll talk soon. No problem. See you later. See ya.